The service had brought together the descendants of some of those who were enslaved, together with descendants of those who, 200 years ago, had campaigned for the end of the trafficking by Britain of millions of Africans to the New World. The Queen was sitting with her husband close to the high altar, close by with the Prime Minister and other senior members of the government. The service had reached its most solemn moments. The Dean of Westminster was leading an act of penitence when the protester stepped forward, unchallenged, from the Abbey's south transept. As he approached, the Queen looked up. He stopped at the bottom of the steps, at the top of which the Queen was seated. The service came to a halt. The congregation watched as, still standing a few yards from the Queen, the protester Toyen Agbeto demanded that Britain issue a formal apology for its part in the slave trade. Mr. Agbeto shouted directly at the Prime Minister sitting in the choir stalls before he finally withdrew. Earlier in the service, the Archbishop of Canterbury, Dr. Rowan Williams, had spoken of Britain's responsibility for the slave trade. We who are the heirs of the slave-owning and slave-trading nations of the past have to face the fact that our historic prosperity was built in large part on this atrocity. Slavery, said the Archbishop, was an offence against the dignity of humans, which was still apparent today, particularly in the exploitation of children and young women. Silence was kept in Westminster Abbey in memory of the millions who suffered as a result of the slave trade. It ended with the sounding of horns made from elephant tusks. Centuries ago, horns like these had warned African villages of the approach of the slavers. The Queen laid flowers at the memorial to William Wilberforce, one of the many who campaigned against the slave trade. And then, to the sound of African drums, she moved outside to the memorial to innocent victims. A tribute across the centuries to the anonymous millions who were denied freedom and dignity by an earlier generation. Nicholas Witchell, BBC News, at Westminster.